So I'm going to go through a few practice exam questions. They uh, refer here to regression questions and I'm quite keen to show you just a few calculation shortcuts because as uh, some students have remarked, there's not a lot of time in the exam. Okay, so you have to uh, you have to work hard. Um, here we go. We are having two variables, y and x, and as you can see, and certainly here already we are being asked to calculate some covariance. Um, for starters, we are asked to calculate just the standard deviation of one variable, but here a covariance between x and y, and then follow-on questions also refer to both variables. So I propose, if you see you have a set of data, two random variables, and you know that you will have to calculate all sorts of things on the basis of this, that you immediately, before you do anything else, you complete the following table and see whether I can just continue that here. We need y minus y bar. We need x minus x bar. We need y minus y bar squared x minus x bar squared and finally we will need y minus y bar times x minus x bar. So Just prepare the table. Of course, you will not have to be as nice and neat in the exam because all we care about is the answer. Well, all I care about is that you learn, but um, on this occasion, it's the answer that counts. So we need, we need, we know we need y bar. So here, what we'll have is we have a column with all the sums of the data. So let's start with y. Uh, negative 4, negative 2 is negative 6, so here we have plus 4, here we have 5, 6, 1, 2, actually 4 on both occasions. That means that we immediately can say that y bar is 1, 4 divided by 4, and x bar is 1. So then y minus y bar, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 6 minus 1 is 5. And let's immediately continue to uh, y minus y bar squared. Negative 5 squared is 25. 9, 9, 25. And I could actually calculate the sums here as well. The sum of this column is always going to be 0. I can already, already write down 0 here. And what have we got here? 50 plus 18, that's 68. So let's go continue with x. 5 minus 1 is 4. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And the squared versions of 16, 1, 0, 9. Then y minus y bar times x minus x bar. So basically, we are looking at this column and this column here. We need to multiply them. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 times 0 is 0. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So as a sum, we get negative. 32. Okay, so that's all the prep work we need, and we will have to refer to these data quite a lot now. So it's worth doing this right at the start. So now, standard deviation of x. So, standard deviation of x, we know that is the square root of variance of x. Now, what we also want here, it says sample standard deviation, so we need the square root of 1 over n minus 1, so we have 3, plus n is 4, times the sum of its x, xi minus x bar squared. Now, this sum, now actually, 
with some colors here. That's, um, so of course, nothing else but this one here. Okay, I actually haven't calculated the sum yet of this. I'm going back to, to blue. What have we got the sum here? That is going to be 26. So what we need is the square root of 26 divided by 3. If it runs at 26 divided by 3 is that, and I need the square root, so that's the same as to the power of 0.5. I have 2.9439, and that is, of course, solution C. Okay, next question. Which of these is a value for the sample covariance? So, what we want is the covariance between y and x, or x and y, it doesn't matter. You should, of course, know the formula. Yeah. Again, the sample covariance, that is 1 over 3, 1 over n minus 1, times the sum of y i minus y bar times x i minus x bar. So let's use some color again. Now this sum is of course nothing else but the sum of this column here. So right here. Okay. So what we want is 1 over 3 times negative 32. And oh, we can already tell that is negative 10 and 2 thirds and that would be this solution here negative 10 and 2 thirds okay so here we've got the next questions 34 and 35 i just copied our table of calculations across because we'll still need it so question 34 if you were to construct a correct scatter diagram for the two variables it would show positive or negative, a normal, a uniform pattern, or no relationship. So uniform pattern, that is quite obviously a, a nonsensical answer here. A normal relationship, I have no idea what that is. So the question is, is it going to be a positive or negative or no relationship? How can we see that? We can actually just look at the, at the values here. We can see that we have two negative values for y. When y is negative, x is positive or zero. And we have one negative observation for x. And when, that, when x is negative, that is when we get the largest positive value for y. So I think without further ado, we could actually say, well, it's got to be b. That's got to be the right solution. Of course, you know you can also calculate the covariance. And we have a negative sign here, and we calculated the covariance before it was a negative value. So we know there should be a negative relationship. So, next question. Your less estimate of the slope of a regression on y on x is... Now, of course, you need to know the formula for that. Remember, when we have a regression, yi equals alpha plus beta xi plus an error term epsilon i, you know that an estimate for b, for the slope, so that is the slope coefficient, that is the intercept. An estimate for the slope for beta, that's our unknown population coefficient, is b equals to the covariance of y and x divided by the variance of the explanatory variable. And that, in this case, is xi. So when we say a regression of y on x, that means that y is the dependent variable and x is the explanatory variable. If it was formulated the other way around, a regression of x on y, the roles would be reversed. So in our sample estimate, we have covariance of both divided by the variance 
of the explanatory variable. Now, before we plug in numbers, we'll just see whether we can simplify our job a little bit. Now, for instance, one I know one student asked me, do I need to know to use the sample or the population covariance and variance? Well, it turns out it doesn't matter as long as you are consistent. In fact, you can make your job a little easier. Let's say we use the population covariance. We would have here in the numerator 1 over n times the sum of phi i minus x bar times x i minus x bar divided by the variance which is 1 over n the sum of x i minus x bar squared. Okay, so and now you can already see that our job gets a little bit easier. We realize that we can cancel these guys out. And now you can see why it doesn't matter if we had used sample covariance, we would have had 1 over n minus 1, both in the numerator and in the denominator, and they would have cancelled out equally. Now, again, you can see what we need now is the sum of the cross product, this guy, but that was of course just what we already calculated up here. And we need the sum of xi minus x bar squared, well this was the guy which we already had here. So the calculation of the solution is pretty straightforward. We have negative 32 divided by 26. So we have a negative number slightly larger than 1 and we don't even have to calculate any further, it's got to be d. That's the only solution that fits that little negative and a little bit larger than 1. That's it. So for the last few, last three questions I again copied our table because it will just it will still come in handy. So the OLS estimate of the intercept of a regression of y on x is the following. I'll just get the regression equation again. So here's our regression equation. Now the intercept, of course, what we're talking about is this guy here. And you know that an estimate for this, you should know, is a equals y bar minus b times x bar. Okay, so that's the sample estimate of the unknown population coefficient alpha. So what we need is y bar and x bar. Well, they were both 1. We calculated that earlier. And now all we need is the coefficient, yes, our estimate for the slope coefficient. And that was negative 32 divided by 26. Okay, so that's our a. Let's see how we can do this with our calculator. What we have, that's a negative, negative that will turn into a plus. 1 we can calculate as, I expand to 26 over 26. We can all have on the same line plus 32. So we get 58 over 26. 52 over 26 would be 2, so we have something a little bit larger than 2, and again the only solution that fits the bill is solution A. Don't need to get out the calculator. Now the r squared of the regression of y on x is, so the r squared is a measure of how well the regression fits, how closely the points fall around the regression line. And the way to calculate it is as follows. You will possibly know the solution, or you should learn it. It's the covariance between yi and xi squared divided by the product of the two variances. Now, you will perhaps recognize that this is nothing else but 
a correlation between yi and xi squared. Okay, the squared correlation. But let's put that aside because if we know this formula, we again can use our values up here in a fairly straightforward way. So let's go back to, to this equation. I'll just undo my last steps. I was just for you to remember. So if we are back here, you know the covariance, let's use the population covariance. Again, it turns out it doesn't matter. 1 over n, the sum of y i minus y bar, x i minus x bar, and this entire thing squared, divided by the variance, so that's 1 over n, the sum of x i minus x bar squared, times 1 over n, the sum of y i minus y bar squared. So again, we'll see that things will simplify a bit because, and now I'll use uh, my little magic eraser. You can see here, before I use the eraser, I'll show you what we have here is 1 over n, but we have that squared. So in the numerator, we have 1 over n squared. And in the denominator, we have 1 over n times, we have times here, 1 over n. So it turns out these guys will cancel out again. OK, and I'll do that. Just with the eraser. And that means I can take that parenthesis away. And this guy here. So, and that simplifies us our, simplifies our equation again. I need the sum of the cross product. Well, uh, we've come across this one before. This guy here is just our negative 32. Then we already recognize our sum of xi minus x bar squared. That's the 26 up here. And what we also need is um, another color, the starters, the sum of yi minus y bar squared. So it's the sum of the squares, that's important. That is this guy here. Okay, so with that in the back, what we need to do is we need to calculate negative 32 squared divided by 26 times 68. Okay, and now it's possibly time to get out the calculator. So we'll calculate 32 times 32, that's the same as 32 squared. And then we divide by 26 times 68. And what we get is 0 0.5792. So that's 0 0.5792. We'll just squeeze that in. And that is this solution here, B. Okay, that means that almost 60% of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by variation in the explanatory variable. Last question, your less estimate of the slope of a regression of x on y is. So this is now the case where we have x i as the dependent variable, and I use just different names to the coefficient because they will be different to these up here. Gamma plus delta y i plus epsilon i. Okay, so now the slope coefficient is this guy here. It's just a different name. Don't, don't get hung up by this one being beta. It's just a different name. You need to recognize what's the slope and what's the intercept. So now we want a, an estimate for that. It's exactly the same formula we used before. Remember what it was? It was the covariance of xi and yi 
divided by the variance. And now of the explanatory variable, that is now yi. So it's the variance of yi. So, and now again, you can do the trick of cancelling the 1 over n. So I'll take a little shortcut. I assume that you understand what we did here. The covariance, what we need is the sum of the cross products. That was again negative 32. And then the variance of y, what we need is the sum of y minus y bar squared. That is 68. So what we get is negative. And now let's see again what have we got if we had negative 32 divided by 64, we would have negative and a half. So that's a bit larger. So we have something a little smaller than a half, something a little smaller than a half. Only one solution here can be the right one. It's got to be D. So it's negative 0.4706. So I hope you realize the first thing I want to convince you is that doing this calculation right at the start of a block of questions that all refers to this data is absolutely worth its while. And if you do, if you work with a calculator, of course, you can use the calculator to calculate almost everything of this. Possibly not the R squared, I'm not sure. It depends on your calculator. But you need to be really sure you know what your calculator is doing. And I would trust myself rather than the calculator. So, thank you very much. I wish you all the best.